this. She's, I have many wives that make everything possible. And <laughs> Jessica Buckleitner is one of them. And she is the, an incredible author and founder of the 50 Women Project, of which Siobhan is, sorry Siobhan. I, I don't know if I should say sorry or, or say great. I'm not sure. Great. Awesome, for your pain and your light coming through. So I would love um, to acknowledge um, not only Jessica Buckleitner's incredible work with the 50 Women Project, but the fact that she is an incredible journalist for the um, United Nations and just Woo! came back as an uh, United Nations NGO and is also the secretary, I'm adding on to your bio here even, no problem. secretary <laughs> of the um, uh, Women's Intercultural Net Network. So she is like gorgeous, change maker and um, says no, says yes, says no, and then always says no. So Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. Let's give it up for Jessica Buckley here. Yeah. All of you have been sitting here listening to a lot of speeches this evening, so I promise I will keep this brief. But what I am about to read to you are four quotes from some of the stories in this book. I've spent the last four years of my life interviewing over 50 women from over 30 countries to compile an anthology and find the connection of what makes all of us women globally. What, what is that, that common seed that all of us share? Well, Let's ask Nima from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Nima says, she is a survivor of the Gatumba massacre that happened on August 14th, 2004 in Burundi in a refugee camp. Nima also survived one month as a prisoner of war in Democratic Republic of Congo. And here's what she said of her testimony during the genocide. They were killing and attacking everyone because they wanted to finish us. The only testimony I can give of this event was from under the dying bodies of other people. I was laying and hiding under the bodies of people who were either already dead or who were dying. I just allowed their lifeless bodies to fall on top of me. There were five, six, then ten bodies on top of me. Everyone was trying to run away and the people that were trying were killed. It was a scene from a horrible nightmare. Well, I'm proud to announce that Nima has returned to the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2011 to visit the orphan children from that horrible night. She braved social phobias. She braved so much to go back and see them. So what does that tell me? Nima has strength and perseverance. The next woman's quote that I want to read to you is a woman from Guatemala who made that treacherous journey across the border. And she not only came across the border, but she came up through Mexico, where she faced discrimination, where she faced a lot, where she also faced being in prison for several weeks because she was detained by Mexican authorities. Here's what she said as she sat in the middle of the desert on her way to the quote-unquote promised land and better life. When I crossed the desert, I felt like it took days and days. Sometimes we had to fall asleep with other groups of people on the way. I remember hearing the howling of the coyotes at night, and they would make me shiver. When I heard their cries, I would feel a chill, a strong coldness through my body because they told us that the coyotes could kill us and eat us. We were all terrified. During that time, there were 16 of us, and to sleep, we would lie down on the ground, and our guide, who was also called a coyote, would tell us to be careful, because there were poisonous reptiles below us. We couldn't sleep anyway. We had no water, we had no food. All we had was a dream. One common theme, strength. Carmen from Guatemala now lives in San Francisco and just received citizenship in this country. 
She is also a survivor of domestic violence, which is another part of her unbelievable story. Now the next quote I want to read to you is a woman from Malaysia. Her name is Azalina. Azalina was an unwanted child because she was a girl. Her parents disowned her, they gave her up. She slept on the porch of her grandmother's house and her only two best friends throughout her entire childhood was a blind chicken and an orangutan named Madhu. Mm. Even as an adult, I feel awkward in my own body and I believe it is the result of all of the abuse. I was beaten often. I just wanted to kill myself most of the time. I sat there wishing they would beat me until I died. I was ridiculed for everything. They always found a reason to hit me. There is nothing worse than your own family making fun of you. That is the worst rejection anyone can ever be subjected to. It's hard for me to talk about the traumas that I endured at the hands of my uncles and brothers because it brings me down so far that I'm depressed for days. Azalina lives in San Francisco and now owns her own company. Yeah. Strength. Now the last woman I want to share with you tonight is Lena from Kazakhstan. Now Lena's family is Russian and there's a lot of discrimination with the Kazakh people if you're Russian. And she's from a border town outside of, outside of Russia. And Lena met a man when she was a teenager. And he, at first, swept her off her feet. And he was powerful, he was political, he was this amazing figure. Until he forced her to be his mistress, and she said what Patricia said, no. Lena ended up in exile. She was forced out of her country, lived in Russia homeless for several months. Here's the story of when he abducted her one night. I was going home from work around 8 p.m. and it was very dark. There were three cars sitting in the yard of our apartment. I saw a driver come out of the car and he grabbed me and threw me in the back seat. The man was there. He started choking me, screaming, I know where you live, I know where you study, I know your family, nothing can stop me. I am powerful. I was so shocked. I thought he would kill me in that moment. I believe that night was the end of my life until they violently threw me from the car and drove away. And I sat there on the ground crying, wondering what I would do, how I would survive. Lena received political asylum in the United States in 2011. <laughs> how did she get out of the situation? Strength. What connected all four of these women? Strength. What connects all of us as women? Strength. After four years of sitting in front of people that I barely knew, so in many cases women that I had just become introduced to that just had learned my name, and they were able to pour out their life stories to me. All of these experiences, women that, that could never talk about these, because Lena, if this man ever found out that she spoke to me about this, if this man ever found out that her story was public, he would kill her family. What made these people trust me? Is it because I'm a woman? No, it's because I formed a genuine, real human connection with all of them. Researcher Renee Brown, I'm sure many of you have seen her TED talk. She's in incredible. She spent 10 years interviewing hundreds of people from around the world through qualitative research, through interviews, through essays, because she wanted to know what is it between all people that connects everyone? What is that central element? And she found that it was vulnerability through all this research, through all these stories. Well, I can say after working on several political asylum cases, after helping a lot of these women out of domestic violence situations, after violating every journalistic principle in the book and actually getting involved in the lives of some of these women, I was searching for what connects women. And my answer, strength. Thank you very much.